it possible to still have peace in today's world? That's a that's a big question, right? That's a deep question too. Uh, is it possible? I believe so. As a Christian, as a believer, I I do believe. Um, we can still find peace in, in today's world. I mean, everywhere, it feels like everywhere we look, uh, we, we, we find reasons to not have peace, right? We, we, we turn on the news, we look on Facebook, we, we, see, we see things that, that usually rob us from, from, from that peace. And, and as we go to scripture, we are also reminded that there is a special peace that comes from God. And that special peace is a gift that he is willing to give us today, here, um, in this moment, in this time, because that peace is a, is a peace that we can claim, that we can receive, but that peace is going to be different than, than, than what the world offers or the world considers as peace. Um, and so I want to invite you today, to open your, your Bibles, if you can join me, we are going to be reading uh, Philippians chapter 4, where Paul is also talking about this peace. He calls it the peace of God. And so, if you can open your Bibles to Philippians and join me, chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to read from verse 6, Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to read uh, verses 6, 7, and 8. Let's read it together. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Verse 9. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. It's 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 interesting how how Paul is kind of giving us like that that prescription. Like when we go to the doctor and he says, Hey, there's there's something going on with you. You here, why don't you take, you know, this three times a day for two weeks. And, and, and I feel like Paul is doing something similar here. He's giving us this prescription. He's recommending us, hey, there is this peace of God, but try this out. Just give it a try, would you? See if there's a difference. And so I, I like to, you know, categorize them or, 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 or put them in a list so that we can see it more clearly and more um, Easy. So uh, why don't we go back to verse 6. And here we see a recommendation from Paul, the first recommendation, right? Recommendation number one, number two, and um, number three. So we see three things. And the final one is found in verse 8. So why don't we, why don't we go one by one, just so that you know what, what we're trying to say and what we're talking about. You see, Paul is saying, do not be anxious, do not worry. How many times have we heard Jesus say this in script, excuse me, in scripture? Well, let me remind you, it's it's found in Matthew 6:27. At least we see more than once where Jesus in Matthew 6 is also telling his disciples, "Hey guys, there's some things that you know, it's best that you not worry about. Let me let me handle this. Let me take care of this." And so I'm reading from the New King, New, New King, yeah, New King James, Matthew 6, 27. And hear this out. This is Jesus saying, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? 
I, I like reading from different translations because each one has something, something to add. And, and, and in some translations it says, which one of you, by worrying, do you think you're gonna, you're gonna grow or, or, or you're gonna make your day better? And so if we, if we just stop and think about this, it kind of makes sense. How many of you guys have actually woken up one morning and, said, and, and have said, today I'm gonna worry? Today, I'm going to make it my goal to be worried. And, you got, and, and, and we're, we're giggling, we're laughing, we're smiling because it just doesn't make sense. You see, worrying doesn't make things better. It, it actually makes things a little bit harder, right, and, and difficult. It makes your day a little bit more, more gray and, and, and dark. And so what, 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 at least what I see here from Scripture, God is reminding us, hey, I am God, I'm in control, do not worry. Isn't God awesome that, that he constantly is reminding us that in the world full of things that rob our peace, we can still find peace because we trust in him, because we can trust that he is in control. And so therefore, that peace of God is going to be visible in our life. You see, we have so many reasons to, to, to say, I'm worried, I'm worried, and, and it's okay, it's normal. Like, we all have different worries. But can we at least try to tell God today, God, I want to put my faith in you completely. Please take care of my worries. Please remove my worries. Because I wrote some notes here. I was reading a, a book the other day about worry, and it says, worry it, it, it also robs you from that valuable time that you could have spent in other things. You see, worry makes your day sadder. And, you know, worry is not, worrying is not worth it at the end of the day. Because imagine if you worried for something that you don't have control over, well... It's kind of like you're worrying twice, right? You're worrying for things that, that you shouldn't have been worrying about in the first place. The other thing that I learned as I was preparing the message is that worrying is also a, a decision that we make. Because, you see, we, we, we weren't taught to get worried. It's, it's, it's just a choice. It's just a decision. And so may I just suggests that just as you learned or decided to worry, I think we can at least try to decide to not worry and leave it all in God's hands. Uh, I think it's possible with faith. And we'll be talking about this throughout, you know, in the following minutes here as we go on in the message. Uh, and some other Bible passages that remind us how the God of peace today is still possible with his help. So let's go back to Philippians because we were talking about four things that can help us find peace in today's world. And we saw the first one and it's, it's about not worrying, right? Leaving it all in God's hand, trusting God in the middle of, in the middle of our problems, in the middle of, our, of, of being worried. We can say, God, today I'm not gonna worry about this. I'm gonna leave it all in your hands. Why? Because worrying is, is, is not worth it, doesn't change the past, right? It, it robs us from our valuable time that we could have spent somewhere else. And so let's go to the, the second thing that, that Paul here is saying. He's saying, Philippians, I'm reading off of Philippians chapter four, verses six. It says, verse six, it says, be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't worry. But in everything by prayer and supplication, Pray for everything. Don't forget that if, if you're going to stop worrying, well, there's this prayer element connected to it. In other words, you want to have peace, but, but how is your prayer life? Because they're connected in a way. You see, when I have peace, it's because I prayed. You see, when, when, when we start experiencing the peace of God, it's because we have this relationship with God where we've spent time one-on-one -on -one saying, God, this is how I feel. Lord, take this away from me. Lord, give me your peace. But you're, you're praying, you're bringing this up to him. You see, prayer builds your faith. 
Prayer builds our faith. Prayer makes the impossible possible. Do you, do you believe that? And so may I just also suggest a special prayer that can help you as you are finding that peace. And that is the following prayer. Lord, may your will be done. See, I believe that that prayer brings me peace. When I pray, Lord, your will be done, I am saying, Lord, I don't have control over these things, but I am trusting you because you know what's best. And so as you are remembering throughout your, throughout your week, maybe you, you have some things coming up, and, and it's not a matter of, 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 of if it happens, it's, it's when it happens, right? When we start getting all these all these calls, texts, or we're looking at things that are bringing us more stress and, and being more worried. Can you remember to lift up a prayer and say, Lord, give me faith to overcome this, this, this period, this, this trial, because I want to have your peace. Don't let anything steal that peace that you have given me. And so there's one more. We're, we're going to go to the third one here in the same verse, Philippians 4, Philippians 4, 6. There's one more thing here. We talked about anxious. We talked about being worried. We talked about prayer. But there's one more thing added to the list, and, and that is thanksgiving. You see, as Christians, we don't celebrate thanksgiving just on November. We do, we do thanksgiving all year long. Am I right? In your homes, make it a habit to, uh, to celebrate Thanksgiving every day because we have so many reasons to be thankful. Uh, a thankful life is a, is a happy life. Uh, a thankful life is one that, that puts their trust in God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, Give thanks in all situations. For everything, give thanks to God because that is the will of God. So remember, next time you're, 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 you're worrying, you're, you're stressed out because of something that you don't have control over, just remember what you're thankful for. What things are you thankful for? You're th you, you, have, you have transportation, you have food, you have, you have the basic necessities that Maybe somebody else would like them, and, and, and God has blessed you. And, and just be thankful. Remember to be thankful. And so there's one more here in this list, because there's four, like I mentioned earlier. And that fourth one is, is on verse 8, where Paul is saying, finally, he's using that word to, to add onto, the, onto something that he wants us to consider. And, 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 and it's very important. And it has to do with our minds, because our minds are very powerful. Am I right? What, you're, what you feed your mind is, is crucial to, to your behavior and to your, how you go on about your day. So, so Paul, he, he, he's serious about this one. Let, why don't we read it one more time? Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, and I, and I think this has a lot to do with having peace or not having peace. You see, verse, verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are, no, are noble, things that are just, things that are pure, whatever is lovely, of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, think about these things. Paul is saying, think about these things because in our mind, it's where most of our battles happen. Before you, 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 you make a decision, you, you, you had to think about it, right? Before it becomes an action, it was a thought. And so if, if, if we want to have the peace of God, well, we need to tell God, God, feed my mind with you. Fill my mind with what Paul is saying, fill my mind in, the, in, in, in a world that, that, that where we're bombarded with, with, 
with evil things and, and, and things that are just distractions, we can pray, Lord, fill my mind with you only. See, there's a story about a man who had two dogs, and, and, and these two dogs were different. They weren't the same. Um, one was skinny. We'll use that word. <laughs> Tiny and skinny. And then there, there was this other big, chunky, big dog. You get the picture. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. And um, a little bit overweight. And, and, and so the neighbors would, would, would see these two dogs every morning running around the yard and the front. And, he, and they would stop and say, hey, neighbor, uh, what's going on here? I mean, you see, the, the, they have the same age. They're about the same breed. But you see, one is skinny and one is overweight. What's going on? And, and so the neighbor said, well, it's easy. Um, I, I feed, and he showed, he showed um, the neighbor the type of food and, and, and the sizes. You see, this is, this is half a cup for him, and I give two cups of the same food to this other dog twice a day, and the other one only, you know, only in the morning. And so that makes sense because one is skinny and one is overweight because the one that's overweight is obviously what? Eating more. And so what I'm, what I'm trying to say with this illustration is that every day we have the choice to feed, to feed both sides. Either you want to feed your spiritual side or you want to feed your, your human nature, right? That, that, that other side that is battling, like, like the Bible says, we're, we're in a constant battle. You choose what side you want to feed. I want to share with you the following Bible verses. And it's found in, in Isaiah. The first one is found in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. And I, I highlighted this one in my Bible. And hopefully one day I'll, I'll print it and put it in, my, in a frame and, or in my fridge. But hopefully you can, you can write this down and and save it for later. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Wow. Think about that. You will keep him in perfect peace. You will keep that person with peace because his mind is on you. That's what it's saying. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. There's one more. Psalms 94, 19. Let's go to Psalms, because we know, we know King David had different moods, right? And I bet one day he just, he, he was just worrying too much. And check this out. Psalms 94, 19. Psalms 94, 19 says the following. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comfort delights my soul. King David had anxiety too. King David had problems like you and me. King David had worries like you and me. But his comfort and his peace came from God. I want to leave you today with, with the following quote. Instead of thinking about how big your problems are, think about how big your God is. Think about the promises of God. Think about the peace of God. Think about the word of God. And my prayer is that you will also experience that peace that comes from God.
Can I pray for you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you because you want to give us that peace that only comes from you. But Father, there are also some steps that we can take so that we can make that happen in our lives as we go on and do our daily things. And, and one of those is to not worry and to trust you and to have a strong prayer life, to be thankful and to think about you as we, as we have more worries and more worries and we feel like we can't handle these situations. May we remember what we listened today, what we heard today, that you're in control, Lord, no matter what happens, that regardless of, of how big our problems are, you are still greater and bigger and powerful and mighty to save. And, and there is still hope for us. We can still have peace. We can still remain in peace. Even though the things are happening around us, Lord, there can, we can still have that safe haven in, in our homes. So that's why, Lord, this prayer is for everybody here today that, that they can have that safe place in their home where there, there could be peace. In their workplace. Maybe it's in their studies. Maybe it's, it's in this church. Father, I pray that your peace can reign over this church. That you can be with us in those hard moments that we can remember that that it's time to be thankful and to remember how good you are father thank you for what you will do keep us keep us with your peace in jesus name we pray amen amen